Hi everyone, I'm Simon from Homesight. Thanks for watching. Today, the kind people at Benexmar have sent me some cool stuff. This is the first one we're going to look at, which is the three and a half inch downlight. It runs on Zigbee. So, and we're going to take a look. We're going to get it added into Home Assistant. Let's go. So like I said, the guys at Benixma had sent me a bunch of stuff which I'm going to be reviewing. They're not paying me, they're not telling me what to say, this is going to be my personal view, my impartial view, and I'm going to be taking, unboxing the, the stuff and having a good look. And like I said, the first one we're going to be looking at is this 3.5 inch Zigbee Downlight. So I really hope you enjoyed this video, hope you give it a like down at the bottom, I hope you subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on any more. Now we're going to get straight on with unboxing this and having a look. So here we go, fairly simple box, smart downlight, you can see that we've got the Zigbee version, there's obviously a Wi-Fi version as well of this, it shows the voltage, AC 85 to 265 volts, which is good, obviously that suits the UK and the US markets, there's RGB CW, now I believe that means red, green, blue, cold and warm, so there's fairly simple instructions by the looks of it, it seems very thin, few icons on the front page, obviously support Zigbee, how to set it up, no, so it's got nothing else in there, how to set it up, hopefully it should be as simple as it sounds, connection with the gateway, how to reset, have a pleasant experience with lights, okay, I will, right, let's have a look, right, a bit of bubble wrap around it, well, we can get rid of the box, Okay, it feels fairly substantial, which is nice. Okay, so we can see the details on the back of the light there. Nice simple driver, feels feels work, feels quite nice. Now I don't know if you've ever fitted these down lights, these little arms on the outside which are designed to hold it up into the ceiling. Sometimes I always feel like they're going to snap your fingers off. They uh, they they bite you. Um, these ones actually feel okay. They feel strong enough that they're going to support the light, but not too strong that they're going to going to catch a hand in a mouse trap. I just want to take this little cover off and have a look to see if we can actually change these white white wires here, or if we actually just need to stick with them. So let's have a little look. See what's underneath. No, it doesn't look like there's a, term, a screw terminal or anything like that. I'm not quite sure why that exists. I suppose it's the part of the manufacturing process. It feels fairly... You might be able to get this back part off, but I think I'm just going to stick with these. Obviously, you'll have to fit a separate junction box for your in and out. Now, whether you do those with a WAGO connector or there's, there's various different junction boxes out there, of course. So let's just put that back in. Okay, so like I say, it feels feels pretty pretty substantial. The wires seem okay. Um, they've they, they have been pre-tinned. Let's just have a look at the size of this. Okay, so we're at eight centimeters. And the actual light element looks to be just over eight centimeters there. Okay, cool. So these wires are pre-tinned or soldered um, so it doesn't look like you're going to need to put a bootlace ferrule on or anything like that, any sort of connector will be able to tighten, whether you use a screw terminal or a push connector, we'll be able to tighten straight to these wires. So first of all let's get it wired up, so here's our light, we've got two wires, nice and simply I'm just going to connect one into my live and one into my neutral. Now this is just obviously on my desk here, um, so we're just going to connect those in using some WAGO connectors, which by the way I would recommend if you're using for a permanent installation as well. And I've just got that on the end of a plug, which I'm just going to plug in in a minute. So I'm just going to turn off the light so that hopefully you can see it a little bit better. So now let's get this down light loaded into Home Assistant. Now I use a CC2531 dongle and Zigbee to MQTT to do that translation and then I'll add that device in manually if it doesn't appear but hopefully it should automatically detect it and enable all of those features that we want. So here's my home assistant, I'm going to go to my Zigbee to MQTT. Now first of all I'm going to have to tick this permit join all and that's now allowing new devices to be added so anything it senses, anything it detects it should add in automatically. So I'm going to plug this device in 
and you can see that that is on and it's flashing away. Oh, it's found it straight away, so it's got a long ID. So we'll give that a second. And hopefully it should appear in this list. So I can see the light stop flashing and it's done this interview process and it's appeared, here we go. So it's showing it as a, obviously a screw in um, bulb, which isn't quite right, but it does show it as RGBCW, which it is, and Zigbee, if I hover over, Zigbee 3 LED bulb, which I suppose it is, it's just in a different form factor. So if I change the, I can change the name of it as well by clicking here, put down my, save. Okay, so if we click on the device itself, it should show what we're able to do with it. Moving, stepping, you can see all of the details in here. You can add them in manually if you prefer to add them into config.yaml. Uh, if we come back to here, if we click on the down light, the name that we just changed it to, we can see what it exposes. So, um, it looks like it's got the status, so I can turn it on and off. I'm looking off to my right because that's where the light is. Um, I can change the brightness. That's, that's quite bright. Um, I don't know how well you can see that on the camera at the moment. You can step that down. Oh, we can get it really dim. That's nice. Can we turn it on to a really low brightness? Let's try that. We can, that's really nice. So most of the LED lights that I have in my house, you can't turn them on to 3%, for example. You'd have to turn them on to 15%. Once they're on and they've got that, that load going through them, you can reduce it down to 3 But this one here looks like we can even turn it on at 1%, which is really cool. And that's really dim. That's really nice. Obviously nice and bright as well. Now, that looks quite a warmish light from where I'm sat, except I keep looking at it and... Um, not being able to see anything. Um, so we can change that colour temp, so that's down to, to a 6500K, six, six, and that's really that's really quite a cold light. And we can change that to a nice warm light. And various steps in between, that's really nice. Okay, so those, this is where a lot of these lights fall down, is they're okay when they're on white, but when you change them to red or any of the other colours, they really start to lose some of that brightness. So we're gonna, I'm gonna put that to full brightness, and that's quite a pink. Okay, so that's an orangey, yellow, green, blue, and purple, the blue's nice. I guess that, I mean, that, that pink, it looks quite a pink for me at the moment, but I guess when we use, when we add it into Home Assistant in our Lovelace dashboard, we can use a colour picker and we can really hone those down as well. And there's various effects on here as well. Blink, so that's sort of toggled through a few different colours. Breathe is going to flash. Not quite sure what that's doing. Now I've got various Zigbee bulbs, various of these lights that have got these effect abilities. And to be honest, I've never really used them. I've never really understood or, or actually been that bothered about using them. Now I figured out that the blink seems to toggle through a few different colors before going back to its previous state. Breathe seems to flash on and off consistently. Now that seems to be the only effect that sort of carries on. Um, OK seems to go to green. Um, for a couple of seconds, maybe a second, and then back to its original state. Channel change goes to blue, and then to, um, it goes to blue for eight seconds, and then back to the original state. And obviously we've got finish effect and finish stop. I guess if you were doing something with a, a Zigbee button, you could have a, a visual confirmation that that action has happened in node red. You could fire it to send one of your bulbs, a group, you know, this OK function. Um, so it will send the light green, and then go back to its normal state if you've double clicked and it's turned on the outside lights or turned on a pump or something, something like that. But you might well have better uses for all of these effects. Anyway, I'm gonna, now I'm gonna get on with adding into a Lovelace interface 
and we're just going to have a little play with just the colour, see what that colour representation looks like. So as some of you may know from my previous videos, I like to add all of my Zigbee devices directly into configuration.yaml. That way I've got total control and I know that nothing is going to change, no update to, to MQTT, um, i.e. Mosquito, the, the broker, or Zigbee to MQTT is going to affect my lights. I know that it's going to work and I can change the configuration if I wish. So I'm going to show you the configurations I use on the screen now, although you'll find that they are the same in this instance as the automatically configured ones. So now I'm going to go ahead and create a Lovelace dashboard just for this device. So here's my dashboard I want to add it onto. I'm going to edit my dashboard and simply add, if I look for the light card, and change the entity to downlight. Now you could change the, um, the bulb, the icon as well if you wish. I'm just going to leave mine as default and press save. Now I've put this white bit of paper here behind the light, so hopefully you can see some of that, that colour representation a little bit better. So you can see I've got it on at the moment at 100% and it's blue, and if I click on it off and on, it turns off and on as you would expect. I'm just going to come out of this view in a minute. There we go. And as soon as we turn the light on, we instantly get the colour temperature chart, which you can see here. So you can see that's a nice warm light, and a nice cool white light. And I've got this colour picker as well. Now we noticed there was a nice blue earlier on. We can choose a cyan, a green, a yellow. You can choose obviously any colour from here at all. Now the thing I noticed earlier on was that the red looked a little bit pink. Um, however, in here you can see that that red is actually quite a nice red. Um, Whereas the one earlier on was more, more like that, I guess, the default. Um, but yeah, it's got quite a nice red. It's got really nice colour representation, actually. I mean, so far, I'm really impressed with this light. Um, I haven't installed it, obviously. Um, I can't tell you speak about the longevity of it um, to see if it's going to last a long time. Um, but certainly my first impression of this is that it's, um, it's actually really bright. It's um, 10 watts. It's a nice light. So the last thing I want to test is to see what the transitions are like, both in terms of colour, colour temperature, and indeed the brightness as well. So let's have a look at that. So I've set up a little test rig here, as you can see behind me, just in node red, of course. Um, so first of all, I'm starting with the light off, um, and I'm going to turn it on to 2%. Now you can see this um, call service node here is choosing the down light, it's setting the brightness to 100%, with a 10 seconds transition. So if I press the inject node there, we can see a fairly smooth transition. That looks nice. There's not a lot of stepping in there. Um, so sometimes you can see that the when the um, brightness is increasing of a light, the it sort of steps up through sort of quite large chunks of the range, but that was actually really nice and smooth. So now I've got these following ones, these following little sequences set up. Now what they're going to do is the first one is going to set it to um, 100, so not 100%, but 100 out of full, full brightness of 255. And it's going to put uh, red, green and blue onto to 100%, so 255, 255, 255. So that looks like this. And the ones below transition um, to, for 10 seconds. But the, the first one goes to 100% of red, but no green and blue. The second one is 100% of green, and the third one is 100% of blue. So let's see how that fares. So you can see over here on the right-hand side, it's gone to red instantly. And it is doing, again, a really nice transition, actually, from, from white all the way through, hopefully, to red. Nice, and let's go from red to green. So 
Obviously 10 seconds is a long time, so you probably wouldn't want that level of transition if you were using it, but what it does show is that level of, again, that stepping. And if you see that stepping, you've, you've probably got quite a poor quality light, but this, as you can see, is really nice and smooth. And final transition from green to blue, Again, really nice and smooth. So finally, I thought I'd just take a quick look at their website and just see how much you can get one of these lights for. And this is it, benixmart.com um, in smart down lights. Um, you can see they've got a bunch of products. Um, these triangular ones look pretty cool. These wall, these wall panels, these wall lights. Um, looks like they've got various different sizes of these. Um, with different adapters as well, so you can get one with an Aussie plug, um, some with a South African plug. Um, this is the one I have here, just with the bare wires, uh, with the RGB cold and white, cold and warm um, LED down light. Not quite sure why they call it a party light. Um, the image here might be a bit misleading. You can get all the lights on at the same time, different colours. Um, but um, I've got the 3.5 inch version, 10 watts, and that's retailing on here on sale at the moment at 26.68, um, reduced from $60. Crikey! Um, you can look at all the functions there. Hopefully, I've given you a feel today for for what my opinion of it is, um, the the quality of it, the transitions, the integration was dead simple with Zigbee. Um, so I, uh, if I was in the market for some of these, I would certainly be looking at th these guys. I have done a bit of a comparison as well, of course. Um, first of all, you can buy these these particular ones on Amazon. Um, this Benix Smart Zigbee um, 3.5 inch version, so it retails at £28 with free delivery, of course. Um, now, I've had a bit of a hunt around and I can't find um, anything that's really comparable. Um, you find the odd one. Uh, this one here, in fact, the two-year Zigbee um, comes in slightly cheaper. Um, it's, it is reporting to be 10 watts as well. Um, with a, that's, a, that's the you know the four-inch recess retrofit. Um, most of them, you know, you find a lot of these GU10 type ones, um, whether they're red, green, blue, or whether they are just just pure white, um, or with a color with a warmth um, shift. Um, but certainly I've got three lights here above my head in the office um, and I am I'm, I'm kind of tempted actually to uh, to change them out for some of these because um, the, the the brightness is just as comparable it's just as good um, but and you can get that that warmth or that coolness depending on what you're looking for so hopefully I've given you a real feel for these lights um, and if you are in the market for it I would recommend them based on my initial findings I mean I haven't got the longevity around it so I couldn't tell how you know what they're what they're like over a long period of time but certainly my initial thoughts have been they're really good so I've hoped that you've liked this video I hope that you've subscribed to the channel down below and I hope you'll join me for the next one thanks very much I'm Simon from Home Side.